Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to speak at Operation Management Summit today. I'd like to talk about quantitative method for open source contribution value and its impact on Sony's business strategy. If you have any question, please ask us at Q and a time. Uh, at first, we'd like to introduce ourselves. I am Kazumi Sato. Uh, I am distinguished engineer at Sony Group Corporation. I have been developing uh, Linux-based system software for various Sony products. I also work on OSS compliance and relationships with uh, communities in uh, Sony Group. Since uh, 2002, Sony has started to use Linux. I have been leading system software development using Linux and introducing it to the products complying with OSS licenses. I am a member of the Software Strategy Committee at Sony Group. Uh, Kuwata-san, please. Hi, I'm Masaki Kuwata. Uh, I'm OSP lead at Sony Group Corporation. I work on leading open source strategies with different business units. I started my career in OSPO in 2022, April. Before that, I worked on the development of embedded software for camcorders and cameras. I'm organizing the Japan OSPO local meetup in Japanese supported by Todo Group and Open Chain Japan Working Group. And let me introduce our co-workers. We worked together for this analysis and discussed a lot. So I appreciate Kuchi-san and Alin very much. Here, you can see our agenda. By the end of this presentation, you will feel and understand how quantitative data is effective for open source promotion. Now, let's get things started from background. OSPO is expanding, especially 2023. As you can see, the graph at the bottom, collaboration on common challenges under to the group and the open chain is very good. However, we have had still big challenges. Our challenges are to step the company up at its stage from consumer to participant, from participant to contributor but it is difficult to understand upper side benefit from lower side. So how to convince engineers and management? Our situation. Undoubtedly, everyone recognized the value of using open source. As you can see the left side of a consumer, it is clearly understandable the benefit of consumer but difficult to make consensus the value of participating and contributing to open source as part of company business activities in some business areas. From consumer, participation looks annoying. From participant, they don't think it is better to contribute for their business. Despite presenting examples of strategic util utilization by other companies, limited acceptance of changing work practices. To resolve, sorry, to resolve these problems, we tried quantitative approach to convince our stakeholders. Okay, our three steps analysis. Let me pass the button to Kazumi-san here. Thank you, Kuwata-san. 
Ah, okay, let me explain our three-step analysis. At first, we uh, assess the company's current situation by analyzing our own open source activities. Then we visualize the overall landscape of our open source activity by using uh, OSCI analysis. OSCI is uh, EPUM open source. At third, uh, we showed the relationship between contribution and businesses. Uh, at first, uh, we, uh, let's start about uh, assessing the company's current situation. Uh, we listed our own open source development project and the number of contributors in each technical categories. As you can see, we have some open source development activity in several technology categories. But uh, if we watch the activity with uh, sales or profits, there is unbalance between business and open source contribution. Right side bar shows the rate of contributors by uh, technical category. Left side shows the rate of our profit and sales and contributors mapped to business categories. And our activities were aware this, uh, aware of this situation by, uh, we, uh, explain this situation. Next, I'd like to explain about visualize the overall landscape of technologies. Uh, we want to visualize the status of open source project technology area related to the business by OSCI. We presented OSSJ uh, 2022 about uh, another analysis with open source contributor index. Uh, the three major neural foundations, Linux Foundation, Apache Software Foundation, and Eclipse Foundation have published information on how to categorize their products. We um, remap uh, categorize uh, because uh, each uh, foundation uh, categorize uh, different, different uh, technical categories. So, so uh, we manually map each other <laughs> and uh, uh, we uh, analyze these categories. Uh, so we categorize projects from three major foundations into technical domain to understand the size of each development. Each foundation classify categories differently, so uh, we normalize them. This page shows uh, developers by uh, categories and foundation. As uh, you can see, cloud is a top category with uh, 2,500 developers, and almost all developers are contributing to Linux Foundation projects. Next is AI and data with 1,200 uh, 1, developers. Uh, and Apache Software Foundation has also large amount of uh, contributors. Uh, third is uh, kernel. And of course, it is under Linux Foundation. Fourth is IoT and embedded with 540 developers. And again, almost all are uh, Linux Foundation. So uh, this graph show Linux Foundation is most important foundation uh, by technology and develop uh, contributor view. This page show uh, technology uh, category uh, technology category contributor. Uh, by uh, OSS analysis 2023. Uh, you can see same uh, contributor number colored by company. Cloud area is uh, developed by cloud company, of course, yeah. In AI and data, the biggest company is Meta uh, Facebook due to 
uh, PyTorch. Uh, PyTorch is a large amount of contributor in this area. In IoT, uh, we can see variety type of uh, companies. Uh, this page shows developers by company. Our analysis is company based, and uh, we can see IT giant at upper side, and um, main category is cloud. But uh, Meta and Apple, they focus on AI and data. And uh, semiconductor companies have about uh, 100 contributors, and they are working on cloud, AI, and IoT. Now, uh, it is coming to a most interesting part, shows the relationship between contribution and businesses. Uh, this page shows deep dive to development person uh, before sharing the quantitative data. Let me share how we analyze it. We firstly look at uh, low OSCI data. As you can see, there are different fraction of uh, by uh, activity by each person. A lot of the developers contribute only a few months. Limited developer works uh, consistently. So we focused on consistent uh, dedicated developers. We define uh, dedicated developers at least 10 monthly and uh, 40 commits a year. This pie chart shows PyTorch dedicated developers. If you look at the dedicated developers who work for their company, Meta has uh, 36% and other, uh, others are uh, total 38 uh, external persons. More than twice development power uh, for PyTorch. Big tech and semiconductor company uh, value by PyTorch as infrastructure and appoint dedicated developers. We suppose the dedicated uh, appointed developer is working at the company's will. This page shows IT tech comp uh, contributors uh, analysis. This table shows contribution repository in PyTorch project and its contribution company. This table shows IT tech contribute to enhance their platform. Google, Amazon, Apple, they are working for their SOCs. Uh, Microsoft looks like working for um, Windows or Azure. <laughs> this page shows analysis of semiconductor companies' contributors. Semiconductor companies contribute to enhance their associates' value. We analyzed, analyzed PyTorch sub-repository commits uh, by semiconductor company, and we understand that they are working for accelerating their uh, SOCs. Next part, I'd like to pass to Kuwata-san. Okay, thank you, Sato-san. Um, now, let's look at progress in our company. Before we got this data, our approach had only qualitative information. However, the business strategy remained the same, even though they understood qualitative information. So, we added quantitative data as shown in blue color in this left side chart, we conducted executive briefings to enhance their understanding of global trends through data. We 
uh, igniting bottom-up movements by delivering presentations with data. And as you can see with the purple color, tailored data analysis for business unit technology character, convincing business units to initiate strategic activities through specific examples from other companies. Quantitative information can convince business unit more. Then business strategy is now included open source, including open source. Let's go into detail. First, let me share how we have conducted executive briefings. First step, we presented to software strategy committee. And second step, we conducted executive briefings to C-class executives. Third step, we discussed with tech executives and distinguished engineers. Fourth step, we presented again with response from senior executives to software strategy committee, including business unit software head. From this process, many of them are convinced with quantitative data. And next, approach to upstream of the business plan. Source information for business plan did not capture open source situation, even though all technology includes open source. So we approached, approached key person of business strategy planning and provided open source trend information with quantitatively analyzed data. Now, technology strategy includes open source explicitly. Third approach, convincing business units. Sony Semiconductor Solutions has OSPO, and they made business units understand the importance of open source. But qualitative information couldn't give them an idea how to change the business plan. So we provided information with quantitatively analyzed PyTorch data, especially semiconductor companies' activity, as we explained at page 24 from Kazumi-san. With this trigger, strategic open source activity has been getting started in semi semiconductor company. Now, we came to final point. Even top-down message is shared. Engineers do not start action soon because they are not convinced without detailed explanation. So, we are conducting a presentation to engineers by tailoring the information to each technology area for obtaining their understanding about contribution value and OSPO activities. Okay, that's everything from our company progress. So let's move on to key takeaways. First point, quantitative data demonstrate the business impacts of open source contribution. And that is useful to gain support from top level executives. Second point, analyzing technology areas with open source and providing input early in business plan discussions is valuable for business and its strategy. Third point, it is important to tailor information by understanding organizations' characteristics to effectively promote open source activities. And fourth step, uh, fourth point, bottom-up activities are also important to convince a lot of engineers. Okay, but still there are additional points. We need the collective knowledge of experts from all technical areas to analyze OSS technology trends. 
it's unrealistic to expect that OSPO would possess all the necessary expertise. Collaboration among technical professionals is essential. Okay, let's conclude our presentation. Thank you very much. Um, Any question? It's time for question. Um, business value um, regarding business but ah, first you don't have mic so uh, question is uh, how we showed the relationship between business value and the access to data then uh, we we presented to uh, just a moment. Let, let me sh go back to the slide. And maybe th this is the mo most effective slide to show the relationship. And because it is easy to understand. The semiconductor companies uh, contrib may, uh, making a contribution to big open sources a lot. And, it, and the, for example, NVIDIA explained it on their site. And it, it helps us to convince the exec, our executive from this situation. Uh, competitors. Competitors. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, so, Sony Group has a lot of categories of uh, business area. So uh, uh, we tailoring and uh, analysis each business category area company <laughs> and uh, compare with our activity and competitor company. Mm. In semiconductor case, uh, NVIDIA is most successful company in the world in the world now, and they contribute to a lot of open source for that, uh, for their GPU. So uh, that, that uh, situation is the mo most convincing uh, situation for uh, executives. Uh, okay. Uh, first question is uh, contribution rule for policy or Sony. Uh, we have uh, some guideline for contribute contribution, and uh, we, uh, of course, uh, do contribute. <laughs> yeah, Every, everyone. Uh, if you use using uh, open source and you find something, we should contribute. That kind of policy we have 
So before this analysis, <laughs> about <laughs> 10 years? <laughs> well, we make that kind of policy 10 years or... Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yes. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we are uh, starting uh, using Linux in uh, 2002. Uh, we have that kind of policy we made uh, at that time first. Yeah. But this situation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the uh, second question is uh, our OSPO style. Uh, we, we, our OSPO st style as a centralized and distribution hybrid type uh, because uh, Sony Group has a lot of uh, subsidiary company and uh, lot, uh, many kind of business model company. So uh, Sony Group Corporation is a headquarter company. We have OSPO and a subsidiary company, electronic company, uh, Semiconductor company also have OSPO. And, uh, we have uh, make relationship for OSPO activities. And of course, pictures, uh, game, and mu uh, that com uh, subsidiary company has uh, some uh, open source activity. We uh, you usually make a relationship with this kind of uh, talks. Sorry, I can pick up the point. Oh, so I wanted, when you pass the information, the data to the engineers, mm -hmm. did you find that they responded with examples of what they were doing and what they would like to interact more with? Ah, I see. Um, no, ah, this is the first question is, after the, we sh shared these data, then engineers or subsidiary companies uh, contributed to open where contributed to and from yeah again sem the example from semiconductor company uh, after this this discussion they uh, planning to contribute to pytorch and some uh, other open source projects still, but the, they are trying to uh, <laughs> resolve their, or construct their, sorry. <laughs> So, uh, actually, uh, we, uh, the, the, um, semiconductor company, uh, OSPO and, uh, some engineer convinced this kind of situation. And, uh, they like to contribute, uh, some related area. But, uh, currently, they are planning to, uh, how, how to contribute or uh, what kind of uh, software to, uh, what kind of software uh, uh, is uh, better to contribute? They are uh, currently planning. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> We have an annual event inside Sony uh, where it's called Open Source 
different days where different teams come together and describe uh, the successes they, they've had with open source projects. And so that helps from a grassroots level. Yeah. Actually, uh, our, our colleagues uh, contrib already contributing to uh, Kernel area uh, recently, EXPAT or LLVM or uh, some kind of technology area already. Hmm? Native native board? Yeah, in Japanese, when you want to say copyright or when you want to say patent, what are the words that you use? Both, both. Yeah. Both? Yeah, but those are copied from the West prior to that, if they exist indigenously in Japan. Mm, still, I cannot say catch the question point. Yeah, sorry, I don't understand uh, your meaning. Co 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 sort of a cultural historical question, and I'm not sure there's an answer, because patents and copyright didn't exist until the U.S. Constitution in the United States, right? No, they go back to uh, 1470. In right, but so we've but only, it's only five is, or six hundred years. Right. With the, the Japanese culture is 2,000 plus years of age, so I, I, I can't imagine they've got anything <laughs> different in that sense. But the concept of intellectual property, at least in the West is a relatively new concept, only five or six hundred years old. <laughs> I'm sure. So why, why this, uh, YP no uh, I, I, I think... Because if it is non-native to another culture, what, why would they be following the OSS exam? What is it indigenous for them to develop software? Why should the Western model so school or yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, software is handling by copyright, and uh, uh, we Sony have a lot, lot of patent. So uh, we are considering pat, 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 patent, such kind of things. Also thinking about to contribute the open source software. Mm. Mm. Is, it, is it okay? Okay. If there is any question? <laughs> Fine. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.